Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now I know, like I told you yesterday, we're approaching the end of the month of November. God has something in store for you. And if you would just believe in Him, you know, John told us, he says, his commandments are not grievous. Don't mind the way people have made it sound or made it grievous, but his commandments are not grievous. If you will only know what the Lord will have you do, you realize that it's not grievous. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, seriously, I have a lot of things I would want to share with you. And by the grace of God, your heart is open to receive and you'll be impacted by God's word. Can we call for that daily bread first? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So I was sharing something with you yesterday. We're doing a recap of everything that we've been talking about throughout the month. Believing in Jesus. And our text is from Mark chapter 16. And from verse 17, Jesus said, This sign shall follow them that believe. And the first thing he said, In my name they will cast out demons. They will cast out devils. And that's what Jesus said. In my name, those who believe in me will cast out devils. And I was telling yesterday that it simply means calling the devils to drive them out in the name of Jesus. So you use the name of Jesus. Praise God. You know, sometimes people just spring up things that come out of their own imagination. No basis for it. And someone is arguing, and it didn't mean you shall say, in Jesus' name. Now, in this regard, Jesus actually meant, use my name to cast out devils. Now you hear people who say, eh, his name is not Jesus, his name is Yeshua. His name, hey, listen to me. Who are we referring to? The devil knows who we're referring to. Praise <laughs> God. So, so if the translation of what we have is Jesus, then there's power in the name because we know who we're talking about. When we call the name Jesus, we're not talking about any other Jesus or some Jesus somewhere in South America or somewhere else. No. We know the Jesus we are talking about, the one who died and God raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the one we are talking about. See that now? So when he says in the name, in my name, they will cast out devils. I remember telling you, I'm going to read a scripture to you today, you know, where Jesus said, this kind does not go out, but by fasting and prayer. Now, this is where they got it from. I want us to look at something very important. Let me show you something in Matthew chapter 17. Follow this now. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffered severely. Now, when, when, you, when you read scriptures, understand that there is this law of um, first account, meaning um, first witness. You know, the person speaking was there. So Matthew probably was there when this event happened. Now, I want you to understand the context with which Jesus made that statement about fasting and praying, about the demons, like a lot of people think. So, now it says, this man came to Jesus and he says, oh, master, my son has epilepsy. He says, for he is an epileptic and suffered severely. Now, that's what the man brought to the disciples. See? Mm. 
For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Take note of those words. First, the father said, this boy is epileptic. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not, what, cure him. And this is what happened. They could not cure him. Okay. Mm. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. Now take note. The disciples were struggling to cure the boy. I want you to understand. The disciples were struggling to cure the boy, right? And they could not. And they brought the boy to Jesus. And immediately they brought the boy to Jesus. The Bible says Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Did you see that? Now, the disciples were trying to cure the boy. It wasn't working. And they brought the boy to Jesus. Jesus rebuked the demon out. The moment he rebuked the demon out, the demon left him. The boy was cured. All right. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Now, actually, what they actually said here was, Why didn't we know to cast him out? Because when they brought the boy, they thought, okay, this, this one needs healing. So they began to pray. They laid hands. They did everything they knew about healing. And it didn't work. What they didn't know that this epilepsy was caused by a demon. The disciples didn't know that. So they didn't know that in dealing with issues like this, you, know, you need to know the difference when somebody is damaged or when somebody is possessed of a demon. See that now? So they came to Jesus and said, how come we couldn't figure that out? How come we couldn't cast him out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief, I surely I say, if you have faith as a, great, as a mustard seed, and you will say to this mountain, move here to there, and it will move, and nothing shall be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now understand, right, these writings were written many years. So um, Matthew writing this, is writing this from the place of spiritual understanding. Now that itself will affect his communication of what happened many years ago. See, so now it suggests that he says you can't drive this kind out except you fast and pray. But literally what Jesus meant or what Jesus said was to detect this kind of condition. In other words, to know the difference between uh, when, when, when a sickness is caused by the presence of a demon. You see, that's what Jesus was referring to. To know that you need some spiritual intelligence and fasting and prayer will give you that spiritual intelligence, which is everything you should know. I mean, if you are fasting and prayer, you're more sensitive to spiritual things than physical. If you're really fasting, not just going on hunger strike. If you set your heart, anytime, you know that, anytime you set your heart to fast, you become more aware of spiritual things than physical things. So Jesus was actually saying that sometimes to know the difference between a demonic situation or a physical um, healing situation, you need to step up your spiritual senses. And fasting and prayer is what helps to activate your spiritual senses. It inclu includes your perception of things, spiritually, of course. So what he was referring to about you fasting and praying it's not to fast and pray before you go and cast demons. Now, Jesus couldn't have said that. You know? If he had said that, then, I mean, if that is true, then that negates everything about the authority that he's giving to us. Yes. The authority, he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. Now he's saying this, this kind good not, goes, does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Understand the context here. And that's this is the only situation that Jesus spoke 
um, with regards to fasting and praying where demonic um, to cast out demons is, is concerned but truly Jesus was referring to detecting because sometimes if you face situations like this you're battling thinking is, is a sickness that needs to be cured and, and the same thing you know you find people taking someone to the different kinds of hospitals they've taken the to the best doctors and the doctors are even confused he said i don't know so what do we do now you see that the person will just stay and die hey there are some sicknesses that are caused by demons if you drive out the demons just like in this case the person gets healed because that sickness is not real that sickness is not on that person's body see that so that sickness was a representation of a demonic activity and so if you drive out the demon the demon leaves with the sickness and the person automatically becomes healed now imagine an epileptic child drive out the demon jesus didn't even say okay now that the demon has come let us heal him no he drove out the demon the epilepsy left also there are many situations like that that people are going through and they suffer because of ignorance they suffer so bad because of ignorance now this is one thing your spiritual senses will do for you to make you decipher what exactly am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a physical condition or am I dealing with a demonic condition? If you're dealing with a demonic condition, your spiritual perception, if you're sharp, will pick it up and you will know that uh -uh, this one is not too much prayer. Rebuke the spirit immediately. The person will get healed. There are, there are women who've not been able to conceive Oh, they've done all kinds of things, but that's just a demonic situation that is operating in their life. There are people who have injuries that will never heal. There are things like that. You've done everything. See, when you fast and pray, what happens? You don't get more power when you fast and pray. What happens when you fast and pray is that you become more intelligent spiritually. See, because now you, you actually start receiving reports from the realm of the spirit. That's what gives you the intelligence. Intelligence is simply what you know and how you apply them. So now if you have some knowledge that is rare to normal people, you operate more intelligently than them. So when you fast and pray, your intelligence, your, your perception, your spiritual senses are open. And so you hear things, you hear instructions, you hear counsel. And by those counsels, you begin to make your war. See? And that's what fasting and prayer does for you. So even if every believer must, fasting and prayer is part of our lives. You can't be a successful believer without fasting and praying. Now, I don't have to, I don't, I'm not saying go fast and pray and kill, your, kill yourself. No. But once in a while. You fast, you pray. Once in a while, you pray, you fast. I'm really talking about fasting. But not so that you don't go and fall that. I'm fasting and praying. Give me more power to be able to cast out devils. No. That's why I kept emphasizing this last week and yesterday. We cast out devils by authority, not by our own strength. By authority. Praise God. So Put that out aside and I was telling you yesterday that Jesus outlined these things properly. So first of all, he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. Now, when you know that you have received authority to cast out devils, meaning you are in the right place to drive out every opposition to the fulfillment of your destiny. You're in the right place. You have the understanding and you have the the ability and willingness to clear them out. You step into the next phase. Now let's look at that. Let's look at that quickly. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And verse 17. Now he says, This sign shall follow them who believe in my name. They shall cast out de devils. The next thing he says after casting out devils is this. They will speak 
with new tongues. Hmm. They will speak with new tongues. Now, funny enough, I'm going to say this to you, and but I'm going to explain it tomorrow because of time. Our time is almost up. Funny enough, many times we have thought Jesus just said they shall speak with tongues. No, Jesus said they shall speak with new tongues. Now, that word new makes a whole difference in this statement. And the truth about it is, to the amazement of many, demon spirits will fight this in your life. Ah, Demons will fight this in your life. That's why Jesus said, first of all, you need to cast them out. When you cast them out, then you find yourself in the place of liberty to speak with new tongues. My time is up. <laughs> Listen, tomorrow is going to be amazing. Don't, don't miss this broadcast tomorrow. Because I'm trusting the Spirit of God. Not only are we going to teach, but, but something is surely going to happen to you tomorrow. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.